Um, Alyssa is coming. She's going to be a little bit late, so I'm proposing that we approve minutes right now. And uh, George did the minutes, and I took a look at them, and I felt that they were okay. I thought they were ready for approval. I'm wondering if anybody else has any. George, would you like to list off the ones that we're doing just so that we have? Well, I, uh, I want to say something about the most recent ones. I have been taking names of uh, members of the public off yes. of the um, yeah. uh, list um, just out of courtesy. Um, but if they speak in public comment, then uh, their name would be mentioned. But otherwise, uh, the only names would be those uh, who are present from the uh, manager. The manager was here, and obviously the RCA members were here. But members of the public, I think we agreed, yeah. we're, we we're just going to. Yeah. They don't need to be identified no. by name. No, unless they speak. <laughs> Other than that, it was fine. Um, and I just made one or two minor uh, spelling, editing things, and uh, numbering. I think it's all in order. Thank you, Phyllis. So we should probably make a motion. Let me just pull up what we have for minutes that we are approving, which should be in draft form in our folder, which doesn't seem to want to come up for me right now. Thank you for this, but that's not what I wanted. Sorry. Um, and while the chair is looking, um, are we caught up? Or are we way behind? I just don't know. I for mean, I, for, for minutes. minutes? For minutes? Um, well, yeah. let's. I see a lot of drafts here. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what we should have been doing. So that's, yeah. Yeah. Which means that we would have minutes from, wow. So we have draft minutes from February 20th, the 25th for March 3rd, um, for March 18th, for April 1st, for April 8th, for April 22nd, for um, May 6th. Um, and some of these I'm noticing, we, I'm just gonna make sure that when we go through and do these that um, it looks like sometimes we have two draft documents, I'm just gonna make sure that we have one. Um, so did I stop at May 13th? May 20th, um, May 22nd, uh, June 3rd, June 10th. So I've read through those um, and I think that's how we agreed to do this last time. I'm pretty sure that we discussed this mm -hmm. during the meeting that George is going to write them, that I would look at them and approve them. Um, and I didn't just have any, any input Anybody else have any input before I say yes, I've approved them, and I will approve them and change them over. Uh, so. Just for the record, actually, we have a note taker. Phillips Lair yep. actually takes the minutes, and then um, I just review yes. the format. Right. So make. that's what I was, I'm so yeah. sorry. Right. I probably, maybe I didn't say that clearly. It's yeah. just that George was going to look through the minutes that we had that were a draft, and then he would go through and take a look and say, yeah, you know, like we do, but instead of, um, we decided that this committee would have George look at them and then the chair say a okay and approve them and do it that way instead of doing it with everybody voting so that's the only difference but yes absolutely phyllis is doing minutes yeah okay so all right just want to make that clear in case it was it was not clear okay so i will so george george is going to reformat them every week well phil oh, And I, didn't, and I did not send you a clear pretty one this week, so I will make sure that I get one out to you, Phyllis, so that, okay. All right, and, so, uh, yeah. go ahead, George. Sarah, will you, I can do this or you will do it, you'll go back and change draft to yes, approve? Yes, I will, I You'll will go that? back okay. and change draft All to right. approved, yep. Right. We'll be caught up. Yep. Yay! Yay. <laughs> okay. That's good. Alrighty. Let me put that 
and I am for everyone out in the audience and for everybody else, I definitely am slow today. So thank you for putting up with me. Let's go back to documents. Let's open up meeting packets. Oh, there we go. I do not want to disconnect. Okay, so I don't know why this wants to do this this way. Okay, apparently, sorry. members can correct me if I'm wrong, and I probably am, but I see um, five, is that right, five committees yes. yep. that we have in front of us. One yep. of them is a committee that um, we are the appointing authority, but the other four are the town manager. Yes. And I'm just going to throw this out here. I would hope, I've had a chance to look through all of this, um, so I'm just speaking for myself, yep. but I'm certainly ready to, uh, to go through these five and move them along. So let me just pull this up and then. Uh, so maybe the first, do you, so we could go through the, um, the town manager's appointments first. And you wanna do that and then we'll wait for finance committee and hopefully the rest of us will have been here by now, yeah. All right, so should we start with historical commission appointments? Okay, so everybody's had a chance to take a look at, and the town manager is out of town today, so he's not here to speak to um, the names that he has chosen, um, but things happen. Um, so I can make, does someone want to make a motion? Do you want me to make the motion? Do you want to have discussion? Should we have discussion on the names first? Well, I think a motion would be in order. Yeah. Yeah. So I so move that the Outreach Communications and Appointments Committee uh, recommend to the Town Council the Town Manager's appointments for The Historic Commission, is that where I am right now? Yeah. Yep. Historical. Historical Commission. Yeah. All right. Um, I second that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Discussion? So the town manager um, updated them as per our request of mm -hmm. the last yep. meeting, which mm -hmm. was nice. We see a fair number of reappointments. I don't know if that is something that uh, concerns anyone. It didn't concern me, but I don't know if that reflects uh, the uh, size of the pool or whether that's simply uh, a recognition that 
um, which seems to be the understanding uh, that if people have served for three years or they serve their term, that they would be given some preference for reappointment until they reach the mythical term limits? <laughs> They're not mythical. I'm sure that they will be. I'm sure that they will be based in reality soon. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's, there's some of the things that we had talked about the last time that's also in, in my report. And so we do have a, a charge for this. We do, we do see a lot of reappointments. Um, again, there's not much of a uh, profile for us or information on people who were being reappointed. So those issues are still there. Mm -hmm. um, I think we brought that up with the town manager. I'm not sure if we'll be seeing, I mean, there's still the, the, the issue that he, you know, he doesn't feel that he needs to um, interview everyone and that he felt like it was sort of, sort of a waste of time to interview people who had already served mm -hmm. and that, you know, he would, he said that he would try to give us um, more information. So I guess this is the idea. Do we, knowing that we've brought up these um, concerns and that we were told, um, you know, we would get the charge, um, but there wouldn't be the interviews of every people who are being reappointed. And I don't know that we necessarily had um, a firm commitment from the town manager that he would actually, that he felt that he needed to sort of um, give a more solid uh, profile on people who are being reappointed. So there is, there is that issue. Well, I, just, um, I just noted, um, yep. I don't think it's uh, one that would uh, cause me to uh, reject any of these candidates, but uh, something I guess we're gonna continue to have a discussion with the town manager on. Okay. I'm sorry to ask you if this is like catching up because I was late. Um, it's okay. So the town manager gave us new versions of yes. these. And so are we, uh, is the conversation that I'm coming into saying it's still not enough? That's what we're, we're just, we're just asking. We're just saying about regarding reappointments. Like what do we, what are we thinking? Do we think, you know, we, we did get. I mean, we got yep. more. We did so get I more. I'm, I'm looking for specifics as to what we think we're missing given that we got nothing before other than the date. Oh, I think so it was, we, right, we no, no, that's more. what I'm saying, is that I definitely think that we have more. I mean, that's, we definitely have more. I, I feel that we were, we were heard. There's some things that, you know, we suggested that have not changed, and there's some things that we suggested that we definitely got more on. So that was just, Evan? So, I, I appreciate that the town manager did, Yeah. he didn't have to, right? right? And he did right. take into consideration. Um, I guess in my thought is, now that we got more, my thought yeah. is, well, what were we actually looking for, right? right. Um, so if I'm looking, if we're looking at historical commission, um, Robin Fordham says, Robin has been a member of the historical commission since August 13, 2018, appointed by the town manager and confirmed by the select board. So that is definitely more than was there before <laughs> as far right. as words, but not more as far as information. actual information, right? right. Whereas for Jane Wald, right, it is useful. I mean, I think most of us probably already knew this information, right? But it, for, for people who might not or for the public, right. it, it's useful to say, makes sense she's on the historical commission because she's the executive director of the Emily Dickinson right. Museum, right? So to me, that was useful information. Um, Ted is a realtor. I mean, like, the thing is, you know, like, we, I, we know Ted Parker, right? But Ted is a realtor and president of Cole Construction. Yeah. Cool, right? Right. I guess the thought process was when we said more, right, right? My thought is always, what is their relationship to the subject matter of the committee, right? right? Yeah. right. So, so we know we want to appoint people to committees that have either an important perspective or skills or qualifications, right? Yeah. And so, a realtor and president of Cole Construction. I guess makes sense from the construction, but I kind of have to like force that connection, right? Right. And so what I'm realizing is when I said more, my thought was what are the qualifications or important perspectives? Like what does this person bring to the committee? Right. Not just what's their profession? Because those two, in, for, for Jane Wald, that's the same thing. Right. For Ted, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I mean, certainly construction, right. realtor, right? There's a lot there. Um, 
but for Rob and Fordham, we have no additional information. Right. And so um, now that we have more, I'm feeling not necessarily more satisfied because but I'm realizing it wasn't just about having more information, it was about looking for something specific, looking for why, you know, if someone does not know Robin Fordham or Ted Parker, right. why are they on this commission, right? Like what is their, what did they bring to the commission? Why were they even originally appointed, right? right. Um, and I think that's the information I was really looking for. I would, I would agree. I would agree. Especially since we don't have information about, you know, anyone else, how, how big the pool was, you know, what was the diversity of the pool? We don't have that information, so I would, yeah. Evan? Like, like with Jane Scheffler, right? This thing, she has a graduate degree in public administration, so your first thought is, okay, why is that important? And then he says, strong research experience, which the commission could use as it seeks to revise right. the demolition bylaw. So it's connecting right. her experience to the work of the <clears throat> committee, right? And so you right. see, oh, this is why that person was selected. Yeah. Knowing that Ted is a realtor doesn't necessarily give you that. And so I think that when I read that sentence, I thought, yes, this is sort of what I'm looking for. Right. But then it, it, it didn't continue. It, I agree. Be yeah, because we sort of already know if they were a reappointment that <laughs> they've been on the committee and that they were appointed you know, by the town manager. And since we're brand new, we would have to have been confirmed by the select board. So I agree. I mean, I think that what we were asking was sort of what we is why this person, like you said, does, and it's not necessarily like qualifications, but it could be special skills, or even if it was something that was, you know, a hobby, George. I agree if all of the uh, rec <clears throat> recommended appointees were uh, like this, but I, also in the summary of process, he just points out that he's interviewing people who expressed an interest in serving on these bodies. And so um, I think that's the first thing. I'm just going to assume that that's a given for all these people. Um, that doesn't answer Evan's question about background skills and so forth, but there might be a place uh, on a committee uh, like this for people who don't have any particular expertise to bring to bear, but have some uh, expressed passion or interest in what the committee does. So if everyone were like that, <clears throat> I would be very concerned. But I'm willing to cut uh, a little slack um, in the case of maybe one or two if the sense is assumed that they have expressed an interest and they have been interviewed, they've been through the process. Um, I think still we could ask the town manager to try and provide some sense of, of, of something more than just, you know, that they have served. But um, I also feel like giving a little benefit of the doubt to the process and to the understanding that everyone who's interviewed has taken the step of saying, I'm interested in this. Um, so, just a thought. Dorothy? I, I'd, I'd actually agree that we should ask the town manager for a little bit more mm -hmm. of a connection between the person's experience or expertise and why it would be useful on this committee. Um, just a sentence or two uh, would be nice. Evan? <laughs> I don't know why, I just couldn't think of your name. Yep, go ahead. It's okay. Um, I think, because I, I think with this, there's also um, sort of a level of consistency across mm -hmm. profiles that we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. And so the interesting thing is, I'm just browsing over Public Art Commission um, and Human Rights Commission where the reappointments have full paragraphs, right? And actually, if you just look at public art and you don't look at the top and you just look at the profiles, you wouldn't know who's a reappointment and right. who's not based on the profiles because all of them are like a paragraph in length, mm -hmm. whereas you would from historical commission. So w what I think I was originally envisioning seeing on these, mm -hmm. I am seeing for public art and I'm yeah. seeing for human rights, yeah. I'm just not seeing on this historical commission one. So I think one of the things that we've been talking about is consistency and having, you know, having the reports that we fill out be consistent and, I, and you're right, I mean, I think it's hard for us as someone who's gonna recommend, as a body that's going to recommend these names, again, that's one of the reasons why we wanted that additional information is that 
you know, if we haven't been around for a long time, we don't know the particular reappoint, the person is being reappointed, we probably don't know anything about them. And, you, and there is that deference to the, the fact that um, they've served before, but then I think that that's sort of for OCA, it's kind of, it goes against what our uh, principles are. So I mean, I think it's important for us to say that we feel like everyone should be interviewed and that you have substantial information about every every single person who you are putting forth, even people who are being reappointed. George. I'm, I'm going to dissent from the idea that everyone needs to be interviewed. I do respect um, the manager's point and also the RAC's point that they unanimously uh, felt that re-interviewing people who have already been interviewed and are serving is a waste of their time. Um, but that's a different point than getting some sort of description, which I understand, and some sort of consistency. But I, I just personally, I'm going to dissent from the idea that, um, uh, that every single appointee must be re-interviewed. Um, I, I don't see the point of that. Um, I just note that Robert For Robin Fordham actually was confirmed by the select board, um, and uh, it very likely the lack of detail is the fact that A, he wasn't interviewed, um, as the town manager said he wasn't going to, and B, there probably wasn't anything on his CAF, and C, he probably doesn't know Robin Fordham that well. So, or maybe all he writes down is what's on the CAF, unless he has a direct interview. Anyway. Oh, oh sorry, George. I didn't mean to cut you off. Robin is she, um, just by the way. <laughs> um, but in addition to that, or, Let's bear in mind that, and, and we are certainly able to disagree on the, re -inter the interview process for, for someone who in fact may not have been interviewed originally. There could be, there are people serving right now who've never been interviewed. And so if they get reappointed, they've never been interviewed because that was a, for, a more recent process. But so aside from that issue, I think one of the other wrinkles to that whole discussion was because we were filling two entire bodies mm -hmm. by doing ZBA and planning board. That reflects back to that whole health of the committee thing and how everybody fits together. And so I think that even people who disagree with reappoint with re-interviewing or interviewing for the first time a reappointment might be willing to concede that under that circumstance you would go ahead at least and and interview potential reappointments but then may feel differently about the one or two reappointment mm -hmm. possibilities that are coming up in the next cycle. So I think that's one of the things we have to tease out because you know, hopefully we'll never have to reappoint an entire body again. It doesn't seem likely that would happen, but I think that was partly a function of that decision and the fact that you know this is a new body that is doing a thing that the entire town council has expressed some reservations about our process, right? And so we are trying to give them as much information as possible by having interviews done of all the people. So that's part of the issue. The other, the other thing I want to make sure is clear is that select board confirmation of town manager appointments was only required under a limited number of things. So the select board appointed a whole bunch of things that had nothing to do with whether or not the town manager thought it was a good idea, although we eventually included him in interviews. The town manager appointed a bunch of things that he could just do with no thought as to what the select board thought about it. And then there were just a few things that were town manager with select board confirmation. Town manager with select board confirmation meant rubber stamp. Mm -hmm. There was literally no discussion except that we all had the CAFs. So therefore we knew what the pool was that he was looking at for confirmation. We don't, we now have a charter that says confirmation, which we can interpret how we want, right? We can interpret it as rubber stamp. We can interpret it as letting the clock run out unless there's something particularly egregious. The previous interpretation of the select board was rubber stamp. So with the understanding that we had CAFs. Right. We don't have CAFs anymore. Sure don't. For town manager appointments, which are the vast majority of appointments. Mm -hmm. And we haven't yet had a conversation about what confirmation might mean beyond what we've been doing here every week that we have a chance to right. do confirmation. So that part is new. And the fact that the select board confirmed an appointment three years ago is not really relevant to our discussion, except to say that they at least had seen the entire pool of CAFs as they came in. Evan? Right, so, so I agree. Knowing that um, the select board 
the town manager appointed and select board confirmed doesn't actually tell me anything about this person and, and it doesn't really tell me anything at all because you know those select board members who knows what they were doing exactly. but who knows who knows but so right so we're, I think that the reason I, I keep sort of harping on this is not to give the town manager more work or not even to, to challenge him anyway but I think it boils down to what Alyssa hinted at or not hinted said explicitly um, as she does is is what is our role? And we haven't dis I was realizing last night as I was sitting reviewing all of these materials that we've had so much work to do that we've not had a whole lot of time to just sit and think about what our role is, what kind of information we need, and all of that. And and so we keep having to do things because they're getting thrown at us and everything that's thrown at us to date has had a timeline on it that right. we were like, so we just need to do this. But I was thinking, sitting there and thinking, why do I wanna know information about Robin Fordham, right? And the reason is I can do nothing but rubber stamp Robin Fordham mm -hmm. if I don't know who she is and why she's on the committee. And if she's a reappointment, how, like give me, like, has she been successful on the committee? Is there something that she, you know, if I don't know any of that, then I can do nothing but approve. And if I can do nothing than approve, then why am I even doing this, right? And I think that's the problem I'm coming up with is we've never decided what our role as OCA is with town manager appointments. And every and so if it's just we recommend to the council to approve every single time, uh, unless something jumps out at us, then sure. But nothing can jump out at us if we don't have right. information, right? right? And so you know, if, if we're gonna vote on these recommendations today, I will vote yes, I guess, for Robin Fordham, even though I know nothing about her, yeah. right? I know. And so I could vote nothing but, yeah, I mean, or I could vote no because I don't have any information, but then that's a whole thing, right? And so there's almost a part of me that wants to take a pause and and have a conversation as a committee as, what is our role with the town manager? What do we actually expect that we do? What does the council expect that we do? When we give a recommendation to approve, what are they, what does that mean to them, right? What are they expecting we did? Because if we say tonight, we recommend you approve these people, and they say, why? My answer is, uh, looked fine. And if they say, well, what do you mean? Yeah. I don't know, yeah. right? And so, if we're just literally a stepping stone towards confirmate towards approval and there's really nothing to hang up unless like one of us sees something and some big red flag goes up then i think we need to make sure that's what the council intended for us to be right and so i guess this is what i'm struggling with is i will only ever vote yes on these unless something really egregious pops up but i don't even know how to see that because i don't have information I don't see any other hands. I'm gonna say I, I completely agree with you. I mean, I think that in the very beginning, we had this discussion about whether or not we would be a rubber stamp committee or that we would actually look for some information. And I would say that I, I myself would want to be able, if someone said to me, oh, you, you saw these names and you, you said, oh, town council should definitely, you know, appoint these people. Like you said, I would like to be able to say why. They would say, oh, well, what do you know about Betty Sue, besides, you know, she was reappointed and I would have to say nothing and that doesn't feel good. So there is a choice. If we're just rubber stamping it, then maybe we just let the clock run out on everything, right? And if not, then what are we looking for? George? I guess if I were asked, I would <clears throat> read um, the town manager assembled a team to conduct interviews. The interview team was comprised of Jane Wall, chair of the historical commission. Jennifer Taub, Chair of the Local Historic District Commission, Connie Kruger from the Residence Advisory Committee, Brandon Tuppence, staff support for the two commissions, and Paul Bachman, Town Manager. Um, again, I think we also need to remember there's a process, and part of our job is just to ensure it's somewhat dry and technical, but it's important that the process, there is a process and it's being followed. And um, so if we were to get this from the Town Manager, and had the kind of detail or lack of detail that we see in terms of uh, the biographies, and the process simply said, these are the people I appointed. That's all it said. 
then I think we would have a serious problem. But we have a process description, and <clears throat> I think it's, you know, that is what I would uh, base my judgment on. I don't think, in other words, that our job is to second guess um, the, the process. It's just to make sure that the process is being followed. If we have questions about the process, we can have the town manager come in and we can, we can talk to him. Um, if he doesn't describe the process or doesn't tell us what the process is, then I guess we really do have a problem. But um, I am comfortable with what we have here. Uh, in one or two cases, I agree, it'd be nice to have a little bit more detail, but what makes me comfortable is that we have a clear description of the process and of the people involved, and um, they all seem quite appropriate, and uh, so I don't have a problem uh, with these recommendations. Um, and that would be my answer if someone asked me, well, aren't you just a rubber stamp? I'd say, well, no, actually, we're not. Um, and uh, that would be how I'd answer it. One way we could have more information about each um, uh, applicant would be if we had their CAS. And um, uh, maybe that situation will change in light of the Hampshire Gazette appealing the, their, uh, the appeal that was just answered um, in the last week about the Hampshire Gazette's request. So we don't know yet what, whether the town is going to be asking for further review, but that might change the situation with regard to the town manager CAS and our ability to look at them. Alyssa? I would just follow up with that with saying beyond the fact that we don't know how long that process, as you indicated, might drag out because one assumes that we will, our attorney will continue to defend our existing position, not simply change their mind in the light of continued requests, is that even if it were determined by the authority that is the final arbiter of that, that our counsel is wrong and that our practice is wrong and that the existing CAFs need to be released, I would argue that at that moment I would be pushing hard to put an immediate stop to the filing of any additional CAFs until we revise the form in a way that makes sense to an agreed upon majority of the town council as to what that CAF. So if we get a ruling tomorrow that says you town are wrong and there are no further ways of appealing that, I would argue that we're not going to just suddenly start getting the CAFs for the town manager's appointments, that we're just not going to be doing anything until that gets sorted out because all those people who already filed CAFs expected them to remain private. Yeah. So there's going to be some fallout to be dealt with associated with that. But it's absolutely true that if that happens, which I don't believe will because I believe they will be protected as personnel documents, so now I'll go down in history as being <laughs> wrong, that's fine because that's what I believe is true. If, however, this particular authority at this particular moment decides that we are wrong, then we will need to have, as we've been talking about, it will be further grist for the mill that we need to have a different form with different fields on it that people do feel as there, there clearly be people who will never be comfortable with filing one, but a way to maximize the amount of people who are willing to file it and yet still you know, not give away people's like specific, very personal information that they might have thought they were providing and not expect to become public to make it clearer that you know it's just name and address and demographics or it's just name and address and writing sample or whatever and it would be a public document in which case as you say then all of us it isn't just that the count whole council would know what the town manager's doing based on the CAFs the entire world would know because that would be everybody. Evan? Right so um, I don't think that the CAFs actually would answer our question necessarily right so we have all now gone through the process of interviewing people right. and also reviewing CAFs, and I think we can all recognize that some CAFs are very useful and some are completely useless, right? Um, and a lot of the important information comes out of the interviews. And so I actually, I don't need to see the CAFs. I don't really care about the CAFs, right? What I care about is why does it make sense for this person to be on this committee, right? And is there a way that I can evaluate that? And if there isn't, I don't know, again, with, with respect to George's point about process, I don't know what my role is to 
a vote to recommend to approve someone to a committee if I have no way of understanding why that person should be on that committee. That information isn't always on the CAF because CAFs can often be very sparse um, and perhaps um, the information came out in an interview. There's also the possibility that some people who were interviewed didn't submit CAFs, right? I mean, we don't really know who was chosen to be interviewed. And so if there was someone without a CAF, they were just referred to him or, or, or something like that, the CAF tells us nothing. I don't care about the CAFs, and, and I don't think this public records request matters to some extent for this because we won't have this information until after the 30-day period anyway. So these, these are going to go into play. Um, and we can't rely on public records requests every time we want, to, we want to know information. All I'm looking for, I think, from the town manager is the ability to tell me, here's what this person brings to the committee, and that's why I am recommending them. And if they've served on the committee, that's fine, but that still doesn't help me answer that question. And so certainly I would defer to reappointment because they've already served on the committee. Um, but if we're just going to be a committee that just says, OK, yeah, reappoint, 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 then we're the reappointments so, committee, so, not the yeah, appointments then what are we, committee. What Agreed. are we doing? So like I said, I actually think that we as a committee need to have a, a broader discussion that we really haven't thoroughly had about what our role is and how we envision it. And then from that needs to come out of what information do we look for? Because otherwise, we would just keep saying to the town manager, no more, no more, no more. And eventually, he's going to say, no, because he doesn't have to give us more, right? He has to give us names and address, and that's it. This also goes back to my point that I feel uncomfortable today that we're debating four sets of nominate or appointments um, without the town manager being present. I know he cannot be present, and he's out of town, and I, I know that we need to do these Today, actually, we don't need I to don't do these today. We, we, we don't to need do to do these today. today. But, but again, thinking about what our role is, to me, it seems like if I can't ask him, so can you just tell me a little bit about Robin Fordham? Then I don't want to vote on that person, right? And I keep calling this one person out, but I it's, know. and I feel bad. <laughs> uh, just for the camera, I have nothing against <laughs> this one individual. It's just this right. is sort of the example. But it, it, it's we've seen a pa we've seen this on other ones too, right? And so, you know. For me, thinking about what I want in this role is I want to know a little bit more about why this person is being recommended to the, to the committee, and I want the town manager present so that I can ask questions, right? Should questions come up? Because if we have questions, then there's no one here to field them. Um, if, the, if we're just checking off the process, then as George recommended, that's fine, but I think we need to decide as a committee that that's what our role is. So if I'm being completely honest, I actually don't necessarily feel comfortable voting on at least historical commission today because I feel like we're doing so just to do so and and we haven't figured out what we're actually doing. So I, I agree with, with Evan because I, I think that just How are we supposed to? How are we supposed to say like, yes, I know something about them, and I think this is fine if we literally don't know something? And, and I also disagree with the idea that just because, and I realize people are volunteering their time, but simply because they can re, be, be reappointed, like, I think that that still sort of needs to either be looked at or just give us the information about, oh, this person. This was what they did when on the CAF or this was the information about them, why they fit in in the beginning and you know they've done a great job or just give us the information about why, what their special skills were to be on that committee in the first place and, and like Evan said, maybe a little bit about what's happened in the meantime. It doesn't have to be big, but it, it should be something. And, and I think that it also comes back to the fact that when we, when OCA looks at, you know, appointing someone and, and giving information, I, I would think that if we, if we then gave our, when we give our names to town council, I feel like town council, rightly so, does take a look at, at the people that we've said, I, I think you should appoint these people, these appointees, and takes a look at our reasoning. I mean, I don't think I would expect the full town council, you know, when we, if we reappoint someone to say, oh, that's fine. Like, otherwise, why would they just, why would you, if it was a three-year term, why would it not just be six? Why would you, you know, 
why wouldn't it be a, sort of like an automatic renewal? I think just having that information is helpful. Hi, George? I think one reason it's not six years is that some people discover they really don't like this committee and they want to get out. And I mean, they, they can anyway, no one can stop them. But um, there's one reason to keep it three years just for that. Um, I guess I come from this from a slightly different perspective. Um, I, I understand our role, well, we're, we're just trying to figure out our role, but I, th I guess I have a view that part of our role is to, um, I, I'm excited when I see uh, this number of people with this set of background, including just the background of having served on historical commission. That I respect, um, have given time um, uh, as volunteers to serve the town. And um, I would like us to uh, keep that in the back of our minds as well. I, I don't want us to overthink this. Um, you know, we're not appointing people to the, you know, the Atomic Energy Commission or something. I mean, these are folks who um, are interested in uh, the historical, the, you know, the history of the town and wanting to preserve it. Um, they've been interviewed. They've, they've uh, gone through the process. Some of them have served already. Um, that, to me, says a lot. Um, and I uh, think that that should be something we should keep in our minds when we're looking at these names. Um, I also feel like it's, it, we need to get some of this uh, moved along. Um, and uh, we've been talking about the fact that we meet every Monday for the last umpteen Mondays. And one of the reasons is that uh, it looks like we're going to maybe kick this down the can or down the road. Um, uh, we have a good group. They've been interviewed. Some of have served already. Um, I am uh, moved by the fact that they, are, they do serve or are willing to serve. And unless something really egregious steps out at me, which in my case would be the process would be, would be not described, um, then I have no problem with uh, sending these folks along to the town council. Alyssa? Can I just follow up, George? So the only thing, reason you would give the town council to not confirm an appointment is because you didn't feel that the process that was used by the town manager was adequately described. Is, is that... Accurate, because again, I'm just trying to figure. I'm, I'm not. No, I, I think I'll figure out our role. Yeah. because there is that in the charter. The charter enables us to not confirm for a reason. It doesn't explain what those reasons might be. So we have to decide what those reasons right, might right, be. Right. I think for me that the main reason would be that the process is not being followed. Um, there might be over time issues of uh, diversity, but I think that's going to take uh, some time for us to assemble data and think about it. Um, but beyond that, um, I, don't see, uh, I don't see us as second guessing or going through CAFs or going through each one of these folks, uh, you know, and looking at them in some kind of, you know, the fact that they're willing to serve, they have served, they've been interviewed, um, the process has been followed. Um, to me is, is satisfactory. So I guess the answer is yes. Um, um, unless something really egregious uh, stood out, if, if a member of the committee raised an objection or if we were learned something about uh, their inability to, uh, to work with other people, I, but I think that usually comes out in the interview process. Um, you have the chairs present in most cases. Um, so I guess I'm saying let's trust the process. Let's trust the people that are you know, doing this um, and uh, if the process is being followed, um, I am, you know, I'm satisfied. And I'm excited that this many people are willing to serve the town on their, of their own free time. So I guess I would say that while we're I would say that every committee and board actually is very important and actually has, all of them wield a certain amount of power. So, and we don't know how many people, like one of the things is, is that I would say that one of the goals of OCA is to make sure that there's a lot of people, there's a rich pool and a lot of people that, that apply. And for me, you know, I, I would just want some more information. Just, I, I'm not asking for their life biography, but even if people are being reappointed, I would like to have some information when, when we 
when we see it. I mean, I, I do think it comes down to whether or not we're making a semi-informed decision or we're just saying, okay. Although I think it's an interesting point that George makes about trusting the process and trusting the people who are doing it. Because I do think that one of the things that, that Oka has said is that even though you know we, the full town, we're only recommending to the full town council, full town council has to make the decision. But I think that we've also made the point that you know, we are trustworthy and we have gone, you know, through this and that this is what we think, but I, I do think that that extra information is needed. George. It's interesting that we happen to begin with historical commission, which is a body that in fact <clears throat> has, what's the technical term, pissed me off in the past <laughs> uh, with some of its decisions. Um, which I find completely um, uh, inexplicable, and if I had them, uh, you know, at, at, in maybe just meeting them in the street or yeah. at a bar, I'd have a discussion <laughs> about why, why they did the things they did. So we could have a discussion here, and I could rant and rave for, for an hour about some of the decisions made by the Historical Commission and wonder how some of these people got appointed. Uh -huh. um, but I think that I want to trust the process and trust the fact that I don't know everything. And um, even though I do not agree with a number of recent decisions by this body, and most of them are being reappointed, um, I'm going to trust the process. And rather than turn this into an inquisition about their particular views on what they consider to be a historical building, um, I'm going to let them do their job. And, um, but we could do that, and we could do that with every single body. Um, and maybe some of you would like to do that. Um, we could uh, have everybody in here, and I could ask them about each one of these decisions <laughs> and have them explain to me how a rational person could make that judgment. Um, but I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not asking to do that. Um, what I'm suggesting is that um, we have a process. It's being followed. Um, many individuals are involved. I think with Evan, I agree, the interviews are probably the most important part of it, and that's something where we are not actually present. Um, and so the fact that there are a number of people present, that they're all participating in the interviews, and that the appropriate people are present, to me, is the most important thing. CAFs, I, you know, we've seen them, as we've said, some are informative, some are really useless. Um, it, I think really is the interview process. Um, is crucial. And that means trusting the interviewers and trusting the process. If we have a problem with that, then we should talk about it. I don't have a problem with it. It seems to be a very robust and healthy process. But if we have a problem with it, let's talk about it. Um, but it's just, to me, this body in particular is one that seems appropriate to begin <laughs> with. And I'm saying let's trust the process and let's appoint these people and let them do their job. Darcy? Um. <laughs> Uh, it makes me nervous to hear um, hear the words trust the process just because um, you know I feel like we are as town council uh, you know we have the authority under the charter to confirm that was a way of <laughs> providing checks and balances in the charter and um, I feel like we are ceding our authority if we don't ask for at least a you know a minimum level of information about the applicants and i agree with evan that we should have more information in a narrative form i think we should also have the actual applications and there's absolutely no reason in the world why we don't have them i think that we should have the uh number of people who applied. So we have an idea what, who these people were, um, you know, how big the pool was, the names of the other people. And so we can have an idea what the spread was and why certain people were appointed and not others. Mm -hmm. And I, I just don't see any reason why if we are being a meaningful body doing confirmation, we wouldn't have that basic information. So you have all heard this from me before and I'm just saying it again. Alyssa? So if we were, so we were talking, George was saying specifically about a problem with the process and I also heard Darcy talking about you know, how we don't have, for example, the town manager CAFs like we did 
pool when we did on select board so we knew what the pool was and we've had that conversation with him and he said no and we still some of us still feel strongly that we still want the CAFs and so we're just kind of at an impasse there and I think that's the kind of thing we need to be able to communicate to the full council in our reports right that we're still we still uneasy or unsatisfied or whatever and that we have mixed feelings about it because not everybody is in agreement on that but that we continue to have these concerns one of the other specific things when you were saying, well, I trust the process, actually I'm uncomfortable with one part, with mm -hmm. at least one part of the process um, beyond the CAFs, which is one part. Mm -hmm. One of the parts I'm, un I'm uneasy with and uh, that I mentioned to the town manager when he was here last week, so it doesn't, didn't change anything to have him not here today because I already had the, convers we had the conversation with him last week, is I'm uncomfortable with the fact that chairs who are up for reappointment are the interview designee from the committee. I feel that, it, as I said then, is that if you're automatically going to reappoint people, then I guess that makes sense, right? Because you know that person's coming back. From the way we approached interviews, it was that we didn't know that that person was automatically coming back. We were not setting a seat aside for that person, so we specifically did not have either the chair of the planning board or the ZBA participate directly in the interviews, just asked them for input via email, and we talked about that as here publicly, what exactly what they told us. But we did not have them sitting at the interview competing for the same slot as somebody they're interviewing, whereas clearly the town manager feels that they are not competing for the same slot because they automatically get reappointed, in which case I don't know how many vacancies we are advertising because we should be advertising the number of vacancies that there are. And if it's assumed that chairs are gonna get reappointed in particular, then that's fewer vacancies than we actually have because we've it's already been decided. And so people should know that they're applying for two slots, not for three, because the third one has already been set aside as a reappointment. And that doesn't seem fair to me, especially given, and we made a point of saying in our announcements there will be vacancies as opposed to there will, and there, the bodies have this many members. There is, however, a document that's published by the town manager's office that says there's this exact number of vacancies. And that exact number of vacancies is wrong if we're set, we're automatically reappointing people. And so that part, so the two parts, I guess, that really is, is what it is a part of the process that makes me uneasy. And I'm not saying he's willing to change. He made that clear that he wasn't at the last moment, but at our last meeting. But I think that that's something that the full town council needs to be aware of as they're making their decisions. And even if the full town council made a motion and said, well, I think I want all the CAFs, and I think I don't want chairs at the interviews, and I think I don't want chair people to automatically get reappointment, the town manager could still say, that's very interesting, and <laughs> continue to do what he, what he does. And we could start rejecting appointments or just accept that that's the way it is. Because in fact, the only thing, as he's repeated to us numerous times, is not even their name and address, it's simply their name. And in fact, I'm a little uneasy with, yeah, addresses, not in the charter, it's name. It's never been name and address. In fact, we didn't used to publish people's addresses exactly for privacy concerns. But now it makes it easier to Google people because now you know which George Smith they're talking about um, because it's the one that has an address. But it's actually only names. And so we are doing this negotiation, right, where we ask for more, and that's why we need to be more specific before we leave here today as exactly what we want. But I think that some of us still have uneasiness with the process, so we can't quite say trust the entire process yet. Evan? So we've been talking about this for an hour. I think we expected yeah. this to be much quicker. Um, so for me personally, despite what I said earlier, um, looking at all three of these sets of appointments, um, Public Art, Local Historic District Commission, and um, Human Rights Commission, I'm 100% comfortable with. Historical Commission, it's really just one and a half names that I'm sort of like, eh, that's not really the information I was looking for. Um, I, I think I actually, again, despite what I said earlier, would be comfortable moving this set forward but would like us as a committee in the n very near future to have a conversation about what exactly we're doing and what our role is and what, I mean, so, you know, George clearly has one opinion of what our role is. Mine, I think, is slightly different. 
um, we, what, what is the consensus of the committee? Um, or even things like, you know, one of the things that George said is um, he would only vote no if he thought saw something egregious in the process. Um, but I'm not even sure what that would be. And then uh, let's say, so there's obviously a lot, we all have different ideas. And so we're all moving forward, but we've never really had a thorough discussion and decision about um, how we evaluate these appointments um, and what our role is. And so, um, I, I would be fine moving forward with these, given that it really is just sort of two names that I'm just like, eh, I wish I had more. Um, but recognizing that I think that we need to have a conversation about this um, at, because we're getting a whole lot more of these soon. George? What I'm hearing from the group and you correct me obviously if I'm wrong, is that certainly one thing that we would be asking again is that we would like the town manager present when we are doing this. Yes, yes. And secondly, in terms of information, what we're particularly looking for is what this person brings to this particular body. So what, as Evan put it, I think, what they bring to the table um, or bring to the body in particular is what we're looking for. And while we felt he did a much better job this time, um, there still were one or two at least where we felt it would, the information was not adequate and we'd like him to, uh, to just make an extra effort to try and address that. Um, I think everything else, so town manager present and a bit more information particularly related to what they bring to the table um, are the two things that I picked up from the discussion the rest, I think, is contentious or potentially contentious. <laughs> but if there's something else that people see that we could add to that, um, these were things we could then communicate to the town manager, no matter how we finally vote today. Let's say we decide to vote them through, but we send this message, or let's say we don't vote them all through, we still could send this message, uh, which would have those two points. Would anyone add anything else to that? Alyssa? So I would, um, one is I'm not sure I'm in agreement about the town manager being present because the reason I say that is because I want, it, I want what we want, what we think we can get, what we can negotiate in writing. And so if he comes and says it here and it's not in the written report and therefore we have to add it mm -hmm. to our written report later or somebody has to watch the tape to see what took, what took place, I feel like it ought to be able to all be covered in the written report or an addendum to the written report. I'm uneasy about saying, oh, we'll just come and explain it to us. Because mm -hmm. then we'll have to say, well, he came and explained it to us, so now we're good with it. So I, I'm a little uneasy with that. But separately from that, I want to have one of us, whoever's writing this, clarify to the town manager that when we, Ev Evan and George and everybody actually, express something along the lines of that extra effort of what they bring to the table. Because one of the things I want to make sure we're not overlooking is that I feel that not consistently, so not in every case, but in many cases, the information we're being given, I feel, is being represented as Look at these people's qualifications and degrees. Okay, so, I mean, if I wanted their resume, I would ask for their resume. I want to know what they bring. And just because they have a master's degree in this or, or have 12 years of experience at, at that, those things sound impressive on their own, but they don't necessarily sound impressive in relation to this particular committee. And so I want to be able to show that somebody who doesn't have all those degrees might be bringing a really valuable perspective because of something else they've been doing, right? But they may not have the right resume words to say that. And I, I worry about the fact that we say we want diversity, but then if we're really just comparing every 50-year-old's resume to a 30-year-old's resume, they're not going to be the same. So we're, if that's true, then we're just always going to pick the 70-year-old. I mean, that, that's not what we wanted to do, right? We wanted to make sure we had some different perspectives. So I'm just asking that we not ask for a litany of every professional position they've had or every amazing advanced degree and the important institution that granted it, as opposed to somebody who went GCC for two years but has been doing community organizing around a very specific issue that is really of interest to this particular committee at this particular time. Because I feel like otherwise they're just, the, 
they get you know, half a sentence or maybe not considered at all because if you're in the process of writing this report, arguably, you might be writing the profiles of the people before you make your final decision. You might be writing it out ahead of time to kind of test yourself. Why am I picking these people? And if all you're doing is listing off their amazing qualifications from prestigious institutions, then you might lose sight of the person who had that really interesting set of experiences and ideas. So I just am cautious that we, I don't want a resume out of that. I want more what Evan described in terms of that connection to that committee at this time and why that's valuable. So hearing all this, I'm, and I understand, you know, we do have a, a timeline and, but at the same time, I think we've also talked about it when we can slowing down and trying to do things the correct way only if it's just that we have not, you know, set a precedent for something and that we've actually asked for what we want um, in real time in order to feel comfortable with our decisions and, and also to say that from the beginning that this is what OCA has felt it needs or, or wants and then we can, you know, we can look at it later and say was that helpful or not. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking right now that um, I might withdraw my motion and maybe, or we can go through and, and vote on it, but what I'm thinking now is maybe at least for this set of appointments we could hold off and then um, with all due respect, you know, let the town manager know that he, here are just some things that we think would help us make our decision and that we think he, he did provide some of those things on the profiles for other committees or commissions and that we'd like to see consistency and, and just to, to say, and, and I don't think this is something that adds too much time or anything to what you're writing a report about. I mean, obviously, if you're picking people, if you're picking appointees, anybody would be thinking, how does this what are the special skills and life experiences that this person has that, that lends them to be someone who would be effective on a committee? So I think that if you've interviewed people, that would obviously be one of your criteria, and it wouldn't be hard to add in a sentence or two sentences um, about that. George. I agree. Um, going forward, yes. Um, I think also we should keep in mind that uh, this is a very unusual circumstance where there's been an enormous backlog of committees. Town manager has been, uh, I think, very assiduous in, in working his way through it with the help of a number of people. And I'm a little concerned about, um, I mean, it's just an enormous number of committees and he still has more to work his way through. And so, um, I would like to give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt in this circumstance, given just the press of committee appointments and the backlog um, and his previous practice. Um, we are also struggling to find out what our role is and communicate that clearly to him. Um, I think we've agreed on at least two, well maybe we haven't, but I felt that it wasn't an either or, it's not town manager either is present or he writes a better description. I think that my thought was it's both, that we would like him present. Um, it's not a substitute for a, a accurate description. Um, it's, it's in addition to. Um, so he's, I'd still like him present, but I'd also like him to uh, address the issue that Evan and the others have raised in terms of what this person brings to the table. But I also think, let's just keep in mind that he's dealing with an enormous number of these. Um, and I think right now, just from a practical point of view, He's giving a certain amount of, of benefit to people who've already served. Um, in the future going forward, I think he'll be more conscious of, of this request and, and will address it, I think, very, very clearly and directly, I hope. Um, but to stop the process now and send this back to him because we want one or two more lines uh, on one or two members of this particular body seems to me to be just uh, going a bit too far. Um, these are good people that do a good job. Um, and, you know, if this were a more normal time and a more normal process, perhaps it would make sense. But at this point, I think um, it seems just too much. Evan? And I, yeah. Oh, sorry, George. I'm so sorry. That's all right. I just, I just prefer that we, we uh, we'll have a vote, I hope, 
and I would urge us to, uh, to approve these, but I also would uh, agree that we need to be very clear with the town manager uh, what we would want going forward. Thank you, George. Sorry about that. Evan? Uh, so I actually would agree with George, I think, and despite all the fuss I've been making for the last hour, um, I do think I'm okay sending these forward given that I have concerns about a small minority of the profiles. Um, but one of the things that I, I would maybe think about um, is instead of, instead of just consistently sending back until we get what we want, right, which I, I worry, right, he, he gave us these last meeting and we said, this is what we want, we sent them back. Now it's come back and we said, uh, better, but yeah, right, and we could send them back and then he, and we could play this game, you know, until the 30 days is up and then he goes, well, it doesn't matter anymore because they're there. Um, maybe it would be useful, so I can easily look at these and say, this is exactly what I'm looking for, this is not what I'm looking for, right? And so it might be useful to, to so like to me, the Human Rights Commission is, is exactly what I'm looking for because everyone has information that describes, well actually, no. <laughs> Most people have information that describe what they what they bring, even if they're for reappointments. Like I said, you can't tell by just looking at the profiles who's reappointment, who's not. Um, and, and I do like that. There is at least one name that, that I think brings a lot to the table that is not explained. Um, and, and it's this defaulting to, here's their job, right? But that doesn't necessarily inform me what they bring to the table, because this one individual I know brings a whole lot to the table that is not articulated here. Um, and so I'm wondering if maybe, I, again, I'm, I am actually fine moving ahead with these, even if I have a, little, a few reservations, because I don't think they're significant enough to sort of clog things up. Um, but I'm wondering if it would be useful to say, to just be clear with him, look, here are some profiles that you did that are really useful, and here are some that, that are not. Because I would also hate to just send things back to him and say more, 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 <laughs> without letting him know what I'm looking for and more. And the problem was last time I didn't really know what I was looking for. And it wasn't until I got this set and realized that with some I was still unsatisfied that I realized what I was looking for, right? If that it does, so maybe we might wanna have a time where we can, where we, um can meet with Mr. Bockelman, and then ahead of time, we would maybe have already written sort of a report or a request or an email or something that we could discuss here simply, you know, just exactly what Evan said, you know, and just say in the, in the future, you know, these are things that would, would help us. And I don't think it's an, I don't think we're asking for an enormous amount, but, um, Certainly, that would, maybe that would be more of a constructive way. Alyssa. I think it's important we do that now, this week, because he's continuing to write these reports, probably yeah. even as we speak, yeah. and it, to, to continue to do these. And so it, this is more work for him than what was done when, for example, when he did it for Select Board. Yeah. And so they're more extensive reports, and so even though this happens every year, that there's always a backlog at this time of year, the reality is part of it is that he has more committees now because the select, yeah. because there isn't a separate body making right. as many appointments, and he's having to write more on each of them. So trying to be you know, reasonably cognizant of his workload amongst all the other things he's doing, I think it's important we tell him that this week so that as he continues to write these, and we just say, these are the things we are concerned about if you want to come to our next meeting and talk about it more, that's fine, but otherwise, just incorporate them. Like, again, I'm, I'm not big on this, let's have an informal conversation, okay. and, then, and then maybe it'll happen and maybe it won't. And we're trying to get across that we're doing this now, yep. and, you know, in two weeks, if, if you're ignoring what we're asking about, then, then we might be having a different conversation about confirming, but we appreciate all the effort that's been expended so far to get us closer together, and we're al we're almost there, except for some permanent sticking points that we will have to deal with in a separate mm -hmm. conversation about CAFs and having chairs present if they're up for reappointment and that sort of thing. But at least this part of it, mm -hmm. we can now give those exact examples of this is what we were looking for, this is pretty, but it isn't what we were trying to find. And I think that would be really, I mean, it would make him happy, right, to have to write less about the other thing and more about this thing. 
rather than just writing whole pages about people. I guess so that just brings up for me, would you like me to, to write something? Do you want, do you feel it should come from the chair? Do you want me to, do you guys feel like you would want to have something? I mean, we all pretty much know what the request is. So I could just do something very simple about what we talked about and just send it to him in an email. Is that, I'm trying to think of how you want to do that. I think you should ask Evan to write it and give it to you and you can sign off on it if you like it. I was it. kind of thinking the same I think thing. That's a really good idea. Sorry, Evan. See, when how, how does Evan feel about that? Well, the problem is, is that when you do such a good job, Evan, and then people... I mean, I, I, it's up to you. If you would rather not, then I totally can. When do you can. want this? <laughs> um, when, when, would, when would be good for you? Two days from now? 48 hours? Let's go about January 25th. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're just trying right. to get it out. Oh, yeah. To him before he writes any more things, right? right? So I mean, it doesn't have to be simpler. elaborate. No. I, th I think Sarah's perfectly capable of writing this. And, um, you know, I, I, again, I believe that we've pretty much expressed it. Uh, we'd like him to be more, uh, a little bit more clear about what these people bring to the table. And uh, maybe that's it. Um, Melissa, what you, No, it's not. It's, okay, good. There is more, and that's why I'm asking well, Evan so, okay, to do it. So it of course, Sarah's capable I of will, it. He, would, he just said it so well. I will draft something and okay. send it to Sarah, who can make it better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And is she, can she CC us, or does that violate no. all laws known to so, me? Yeah. So the two of them, you're not making up new things. This is not your opportunity to write a new memo. So you're only talking about things we already discussed here, so you're just memorializing that in writing. And right. so that goes to her, and once she's finished with it and says, this is my signed thing, just like when Lynn signed something on behalf of the whole town council, right. if it was something we did in public session, then it can be sent back out to us. Right. But it wouldn't be sent out to us for each of us to say, oh, no, I think no, you forgot no. a comma, Evan. So, no, right. Because that but would never happen anyway. But she could see, she will see, when she, see it. When, when she she's done. It to exactly. The right. She may. She will. She could. <laughs> <laughs> she might. You're so not directed, George. <laughs> I, I, I will. I will. <laughs> so, we, um, so I made the motion that we appoint these. I think, believe that you seconded it. I thought it was Evan. No, it was Darcy? It was Darcy. Okay, sorry, Darcy. Motion wow. is on the table. It's been seconded. All it's right. Been some discussion. <laughs> some discussion. All those in favor? What was the motion? Oh. To, to, uh, how do you say it? Recommend. So the town manager's appointment of Lynn and Sophie. So we're just doing one. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't lump them in. All right. Even That'd though we crazy. talked about all of we them. Could, I mean, in well, some, we in some general sense. So maybe sense. next time we, we could. Can we? I think we. I think it was the point that we sort of just did. We should probably. We did just have deliberation on all, but yeah. maybe if people might, if there might be split votes, maybe we'd be better off yeah. to go ahead and do each, each body separately, just in case there is a split vote. Okay. So motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. So that was historic. Yep. It was historical. Yes, all in all, absolutely the entire conversation historical. So we could make the motion on the next one and maybe we wouldn't feel the need to have a lot of discussion. Correct. Um, and since I'm having, uh, yeah, does somebody want to make the, the motion while I try to get this back up because for some reason I've. I move to recommend the town council approve the town manager's appointments to the Human Rights Commission. Discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. Okay. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We're on a roll. So I make the motion that um, OCA recommend to the town council the town manager's appointments to the Public Art Commission. Second. Discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry, I told you I only need help this this time around. We just did Historical public arts, human, human rights. Yep. Public arts. Public arts. Local historic. And, and then the history. Local. Yeah. Local I make the motion that uh, Oka recommend to town council the town manager's appointments of the local okay. historic commission district, district commission. commission second all those oh discussion i also appreciated that the town manager added the part that comes from um, the law we accepted with local historic district commissions as to who represents what luckily the people who represent the various uh, agencies and organizations are continuing so we have the necessary coverage from all the necessary parties this is like having designees most committees don't have that but this is one that does so it was great that he added that in further discussion all those in favor aye, aye. all the votes were five zero after all yep but it was good that we did it that way i think just in case out of respect so i have a question about process yes so um i mean it's not like we i'm a little i'm just giving the caveat we do have a decision tree that says why or why not we might not confirm appointments. So it's not like we haven't talked about a million times and right. had a graphic right. associated with it, but we're, we've learned more <laughs> since then That's about true. what we about what we know and about what questions people have. So aside from that part, moving forward with this, so we just we just voted all these. We have a town council meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. We are not planning because it would not um, the information hasn't yet gone to the council, so there's no reason that they would want to hurry up and do it tonight. So we're looking at July. First, I'm assuming we wouldn't be doing this at our council special meeting on the 24th. So that would be crazy. So July 1st is when this report needs to be attached to the posting Correct. for July 1st. Correct. And I guess then my question is just we need somebody to write the report, which usually falls to you, Sarah, as chair. But it seems like that report would also include that email that Evan's working on that you'll yep. be sending to the town manager. That way you don't have to like right. talk about it that much. You can just say, see the attached email we sent about these questions, right? So that's less to write in the report itself other than the votes, which all happen to turn out unanimously. The, the one thing I would add to that is we do have a decision tree. However, if you look at the decision tree, the questions, we can't answer most of them based on the information we have. Yeah. So, so we know what questions we're asking, but we don't have, have the information the answer. to answer them. So it's, it's essentially useless. It was very useful for the town council appointments because we had everything, right? But for this. That's a really good point. And we should be attaching that tree to this right. report anyway, right. and we right. should mention that in the report. Yeah. Isn't it a beautiful tree? <laughs> <laughs> what if all the fruits were ripe on this tree? Okay, so um, I'm gonna, we, the next thing I think that we should um, talk about is the non-voting resident appointments to finance committee. Um, I need to step out for a minute. Would you like to just take a very, very should quick, we take a quick break? break? Yep. It was it was attached to the yeah, meeting posting for today. The whole world's had it since Thursday. Can you go to, can you go to the the town website where the meeting posting is? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, the, if that's the meeting posting, you scroll down and it shows the report on the right there. If that's the actual town website. That's not the town website, that's an email from Sarah. <laughs> that's why. That's, that's right, because we went back and forth. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's the county website. 
Go to your town, town website. website. Yeah. See it right there. Just what we're saying. Okay. Oh, right in front of me. Duh. That's what we're learning. It, that's, that's, that's new in the past yeah, two months. Yeah, yeah. Gonna run upstairs and see if Angela has the answer to your final question. I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. From our oh, not our break. No, I did not record our. Break. I did record maybe three seconds of our break. Um, so we are now going to tackle um, the non-voting resident appointments to finance committee. And for that, I think we should start um, by speaking to Darcy. Take it away, Darcy. I think you all have the memo in front of you, and have you, presumably you've all read it. Um, so um, I um, interviewed people a couple of weeks ago for this position and ultimately came up with a recommendation of these three people that are listed, Mary Lou Tileman, Sharon Povanelli and Robert Hegner. And um, they were, um, I basically, it was um, a much more intense process than I thought it was going to be, uh, trying to figure this out. But um, basically I came down uh, uh, with these three based on the fact that they provided a mix of what the finance committee wanted um, and a mix of expertise and experience. So um, Mary Lou, who had served on the former finance committee, obviously has a really deep knowledge of municipal finance, specifically to Amherst. Um, she also has a specific expertise in the area of the schools and the school budget. Um, and Sharon uh, had just started on the finance committee in its, um, just before it dissolved. He, she had been on the finance committee for a year. So she had that experience Plus, um, she's a downtown business owner, she's the treasurer of her business, and she's the treasurer of the bid, and so she brings that financial perspective. Um, and thirdly, a new person um, who is, um, his application really wowed me as far as his um, incredible experience both um, abroad as a researcher um, and uh, more recently as a senior vice president at a huge disaster relief consulting firm where he managed a, a $79 million HUD CDBG contract 
Um, he was involved in Hurricane Sandy relief and also Hurricanes Rita. Um, oops, uh, one, that was supposed to say Katrina in there somewhere. That was a misstatement. Um, uh, and he has done the full array of um, financial management, um, including defining projects, developing budgets, tracking expenditures against budgets, et cetera. Um, and one thing that really interested me about him was that he had developed uh, a, an innovative tool, uh, a dashboard that tracked program performance against program expenditures. Um, and that seemed like a very valuable skill to bring to our finance committee. Um, he has just started working part-time, so he has the ability to do this now. So um, I wrote more about him because he's new uh, to town government. He hasn't served on any committee before, uh, but he seemed uh, highly skilled and, of course, it's fine to have more men on the finance committee. Um, so, uh, just to run through the process, um, I used the criteria that was provided by the Finance Committee, um, in addition to just trying to look for a mix. Um, but that was basically what they also suggested, a mix of, of expertise. Uh, The interviews uh, were conducted at the police station um, and we had previously decided that we were going to have interviews for 20 minutes. I stretched that to 25 minutes. The um, town manager had scheduled them for every 15 minutes, but that was their own suggestion. Um, I um, felt like I should have been involved in the process of setting up the appointments earlier, that I should have been copied on all those emails um, so that I could get a little bit of a sense of why people were withdrawing or what their responses were, what their voices were. Um, and I did get that about halfway through the process, but it does occur to me that in the future we should just be copied on all the contacts with all the interviewees, potential interviewees or applicants. Um, so that's about it um, as far as the, what, what my process was. You can see in this um, what the demographics were. Um, two of the people didn't self-identify, so <laughs> there's only one person uh, who did identify uh, as a white male between the ages of 60 and 69. Uh, and I've listed the interview questions here, et cetera, et cetera. The handout that the Finance Committee provided um, was provided to each person by email and at the interview, as well as the charge. Um, Sonia Aldrich uh, was in on the interviews, and she and I discussed the, appoint, uh, the uh, applicants after in between the interviews and during the process and at the end. Um, so that's, I think, basically explains what the process was. Mm -hmm. Questions? Uh, 
go with that. So I actually have several questions. One of the things I really liked that you included in this, Darcy, was the concern about people not finding the time acceptable, because that's one thing that, that was interesting to me about our new council schedule in general, and that I've gotten some feedback in the community from, is that almost all our meetings are during the day that aren't full town council meetings, which was not the tradition in the past. And so in some ways, we might be attracting different people to, a, to, think, do, to pay attention to what we're doing, because we're doing it during the day but then the people who would come to night meetings are not able to either serve on that or to watch that. And so finance committee was traditionally at night. That's not to say it needs to be at night. I'm just saying that it is different, right? And so um, depending on people's schedules, and we've always had people who said, oh, it's not a new committee where we can all decide together when we're gonna start meeting. I'm joining an existing committee, and that's when they meet at Mondays at three. Oh, I can't do it then. And so that is unfortunate, but I think it is always worth mentioning that there were people who were interested that might have been a good fit, but at this life stage could not do it at the time that that committee meets. I think that's always important to recognize. Um, I would just like when we write our OCA report that covers, you know, that serves as the cover to this, to clarify a couple of things, some of which we talked about last week and some of which may be new which is that the interview questions that you've listed here are, not, are, I believe, the questions that we did vote on April 8th. They are not the questions we agreed would be the questions for the Finance Committee, because those questions were slightly different. When you mentioned using criteria from the Finance Committee, it's my understanding you use criteria from the Finance Committee that OCA agreed was the criteria from the Finance Committee, because they visited us and we talked about it. They gave us their set of questions, which for whatever coincidental reason looked a whole lot like our set of questions, but was different. And we incorporated that and the standard interview questions, I'm hoping wasn't actually used because that's not the set of questions we agreed was gonna be used by the, for the finance committee thing. So I don't know if that's just a cut and paste. Yes, that, that's my mistake of, of uh, the title. I should have said the finance questions that we adopted on some other day. <laughs> but these are, yeah. the, these are the April 8th questions. This is not the one that includes the Finance Committee. No, this is. This is the questions mm -hmm. that we decided that would be asked of the Finance Committee. Mm, it's missing They're a little anything. different. Not much, but a little bit different. Um, but OK, so we can look at that before we write our report. So I don't mean okay. to go on and on forever, but I, okay. I don't think that's true because I'm not seeing anything about the Finance Committee in that question. So maybe I'm not remembering the very last iteration we did of those questions. Um, I also appreciate the part you said about not knowing you know, who might have withdrawn, who was having trouble getting scheduled, et cetera, because that's something we've talked about at our previous reports. Like, while the whole town council has gotten all the CAFs, we don't know that, in fact, some of those people might have already withdrawn before the interview process, might have withdrawn during the interview process, might have withdrawn a week after the interview process. And so there, there's, and if you don't even know that as the designee, right, much less, much less the entire council knowing. And so I was just up speaking with Angela on a related topic and mentioned that that was something we would definitely want to talk more about in terms of what our expectation was, because I think RAC may have a different expectation, and that's fine, that's what they do. but that we need to figure out how that works like and does all of OCA get it does the whole town council get it and at what point and and that chart that she provided this morning only provides what she knew up to the point of the interviews because other things happen during the course of the interviews with more people withdrawing I just had a couple more. Um, one is that the demographic, we've, you know, we've gone around so many circles about demographics and what to list and what not, and the town managers, you know, we've talked about so many variations of this, but I don't remember a variation where we only list the demographics of the three people being offered appointment. And so that was a strange, I don't remember any of our examples doing it that way. And so, I'm somewhat uncomfortable with that when I thought the point was to show not who these people were, because after all, we're giving these people names, was either to include them in some future aggregate or to address it more obliquely as we did with our other reports. But our 
other reports didn't only give the demographics for the people whose names we were listing. Is that true? Yeah. The, the rest yeah. of them show up for the entire pool, which gives it people an idea of what the rest of the pool looked like. Oh. But what all our other reports say. Yeah. Yeah. Right. My mistake. Right, because I think the point is, do the people who are being appointed seem generally representative of the pool? So if you put four, if it was a pool of ten women and three men, and you appointed only the three men, that would we'd go, huh? That's weird, right? So we need to know the pool. Yeah. So um, you're saying that we can convey the total number of people in the pool in our report? That's two different things. One is the total number of people who applied. You can arguably, we, we've argued over whether or not to say 20 people applied for five slots. A separate issue is five people self-identified as this, four people self-identified as that, one person self-identified as that. That doesn't necessarily add up to N. Like, that doesn't necessarily add up to the full C, because we haven't, in fact, said in any of our previous reports as OCA that this was how many we had total of CAFs. And so we're not trying to get to that end number. What we're trying to do is do that reflection, which is piecemeal and difficult, because people only report what they report. But I would argue that I, I, certainly none of our reports only gave the demographics that this body has done so far, only gave the demographics for the people being appointed. It was to give a sense of the pool. And it didn't say, of these 21, this many did this necessarily. It just would say, we could leave that number off because we've argued about whether or not to include that number of total. But it could say five people, of the people who were interviewed, five people identified as this, three people identified as that, one person identified as that, and those things could all actually be the same three pe five people, or they could be different people who answered different questions, right? Because we saw that not everybody answers every question. So we're just talking about the number of people who were interviewed, because you saw at the, on the chart that you got this morning that only about half of the people who applied were interviewed. And that's the other question right, associated with that, where we, we've done it different ways each time. The one way we hadn't yet done it was the way you did it, which was to only report on those people. I'm not sure that that gives us anything. I'm not sure that any of our solutions have given us what we wanted. Evan? So for Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, and Ranked Choice Voting Commission, uh, we used the applicant pool, not necessarily those who were interviewed, that being said, they were, it was the applicant pool that we knew of, and so there perhaps was a broader pool, and we only got the, the assumption was for those three committees, the applicant pool was who was being interviewed, right? right. Um, that might not necessarily be the case. We don't have that information, um, which is a whole nother discussion topic that I think we need to have at some point. Um, but what we did for those three bodies um, were the graphs that allowed you to see the demographic information of the pool without knowing the exact numbers so that it wouldn't be revealing but would still give you a sense of the demographics. Um, so we never, we've, I don't think that to date we've released the exact number of people in the pool, but we have given the demographics of the pool, if I'm remembering. The only difference is uh, participatory budgeting commission, which I believe was a narrative description of the pool. So you want me to amend this or do something about it? <laughs> right. So we should follow one of the standards we right. previously established, not just make up a new one. So yes, if you. If you could, and then you can, if you look at the other reports, you can decide how you want to do it, whether you want to make it representative of the entire pool as you knew it in the very beginning. These aren't going to be voted on tonight, right? No. So I can just do it by the next meeting, right? It'll have to be 
attached to, well, yes and no, in that we need to write a cover to it. And if we're not ready to write a cover to it because we don't feel like it's quite done yet, then we need to have enough time to write the cover, get the cover and your revised memo linked to the, posting. the actual posting For of the 7-1 meeting. And so yes, there's definitely time, but there's not like kind of unlimited time <laughs> because do we it by have Wednesday. to talk about, OCA needs to talk about what our report's gonna say before we're able to, to add that then. I mean, even though we don't have a practice of finalizing every single report at this meeting, we need to have somebody able to write a cover letter based on revised content. All right, so that means, yes, if you could have something in just, um, I, guess it's, I guess it's me again. <laughs> Um, if you could revise it and then send it to me, and then I guess I'm writing the cover letter. So she would revise it and send it back to OCA for our next meeting. Arguably, if it's like not name changes necessary, I mean, I don't know. I mean, at this point, is it expression of opinion like it was this first time, right? The names were clearly an expression of opinion. If this is just tweaking, I'm not. 100% certain it has to be attached to the next OCA meeting posting, but it has to be clear that we've all seen it yeah. and we understand why whatever's being written in the cover letter is being written in the cover letter because the cover letter can fill in gaps too. Um, arguably, the cover letter could in fact instead be written by Darcy and say, hey, I'm actually changing these things based on the initial report. Let me give you some more information about Traditionally, the cover letter has been written by the person who, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, the cover letter's been written by the person who's the designee, who says what happened, okay, I gave this to OCA, OCA voted, here's what OCA voted, here are the concerns OCA here's expressed. The discussion. So rather than feeling like you have to revise the original report, it's more that you're now writing the cover to that report, which can clarify the date on the questions, it can clarify the part about the demographics. I listed it this way, but we actually are following this model of doing it. Okay. So there are, okay. yeah, so there are I templates. Get it. You got it, okay. All right. I have more things, but I would rather wait for more people to okay, talk. Evan? So uh, with regard to the questions, um, they are so similar, but just slightly different than the ones that we adopted. Um, the interview questions, that was your point, right? Are these? So, which ones are So I have in front of, I, those are the interview, I don't know which ones those are. They're not, so I have in front of me um, our interview question protocol voted 4819, modified 513, voted 520. And they are remarkably similar, but not exact. So I don't know what these questions are. Um, but there's, so for instance, one, one example of a difference is uh, question one, two, three, four, five. What do you think is the role of a non-voting member of the committee? And the question we adopted is, what do you envision as the role of non-voting resident members of the finance committee? So, I mean, it's really the, almost the same question, but just slightly different. So I don't quite know where that mishap happened, but, um, and I don't know how significant that is. What do you think is the role and what do you envision of the role is, is probably the same thing, right? But could also be interpreted differently. So I don't know what we want to do about that aspect. These are not technically the questions we voted on, but they're damn close. That's, so that's the other thing I'm confused about. I'm sorry. No, go right ahead. Is no, that ahead. I know we voted a set of questions on April 8th, right? And we've been using those and all right. the other reports because those were standard. So the ones that you've just pulled up, because you are so good at this, is were the finance committee ones because we had no reason to modify the original ones. So they, these were the ones from 520 are the ones that, I think that was the last date you gave, are the ones that we agreed to use for the finance committee only, not for anything else. Yeah. And so those are the exact questions that should be listed in the report unless they weren't actually the questions that were used in the interview, in which case it's kind of pointless to list questions that weren't actually used. So I guess the question is which I'm guessing these questions were the ones that were asked because otherwise, like, where would Darcy have gotten them from? I'll solve this mystery. You will. Um, it's a mystery. I, uh, 
you know, I just cut and paste the standard interview questions in, and I looked at them and saw that they were not the questions that I asked because I asked the finance committee questions. So I just changed them from memory to what, because I had, I remembered, I had already asked them many, many times, so I knew what they were, and I did not get every single word correct. But, but the questions you actually asked were the ones that we adopted. Is what, yes. uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So that's just a copy and paste thing. Yeah. But again, you don't have to like revise your original report. You just add that on the cover letter. Like, I know it said that, but what I actually used was this. It was just cut and paste thing. Big deal. Yeah, with that part. Evan, keep going. Yeah, there um, you go. So out of, uh, this is two questions about the interviews themselves. Um, the town manager was not present, I assume, since he's not named. Was he asked to be part of the interviews? No. Is there, I mean, the town manager has been present for every other set of interviews. Is there a particular reason that he wasn't asked? That was um, my discretion, right, as the designee? No. I believe it was. I think that's in our process. It says at the discretion of the designee. My question is, why did you choose to use that discretion in this instance to not ask the town manager, uh, considering it's been sort of standard for the other four bodies that we've appointed? because um, I felt that Sonia, Sonia's presence would be adequate, and um, I did have an exchange with the town manager who said that he thought she would be adequate too. Um, uh, so it's a town council appointment. I. You know, I guess I felt um, that to have a town council appointment interview in the town manager's office um, with the town manager presence really is he has a, you know, uh, he has a lot of weight when he is in the room. And um, I just felt like the interviewees should understand that it's a different kind of appointment. And I actually started each interview by talking about that to each interviewee, uh, kind of explaining why, who I was and why I was the person interviewing them because they, you know, they don't know me. You know, they, <laughs> it's like, why are you doing the interview? Um, and so I explained that this was, uh, you know, a, an appointment by the town council, and that's why I was doing the interview, and that Sonia was present to give expertise, um, and that seemed to go fine. So then the second part was just generally, can you talk about how Sonia was utilized in the interviews or afterwards? She was there in case there were any questions about the charge, about the handout. Not, uh, I don't think her, she was called upon to, to respond to much. Um, I asked her, we had the opportunity to talk at the end and actually between some of the interviews, um, generally about the finance committee and her, uh, impressions of the applicants. So I actually found that to be extremely helpful. Alyssa, question for you. So, so Darcy, I totally admit that it says in um, the process that is our adopted process from March 18th, and I wonder if we're talking about the same process where it says, 
OCA designee, after consultation with relevant actors, town manager, committee chair, and staff liaison, sends recommended appointees to full OCA. OCA designee schedules an interview with every applicant and may at their discretion invite the town manager, committee chair, and or staff liaison. And so I think it was just that it was confusing to us that we had been consistently doing that and there was not any discussion of why to do it differently, just as there was absolutely no discussion of extending the interview of time, even though we didn't make I don't remember us saying it's optional to have a longer interview time. And so we're just, this is something we all need to learn moving forward is what discretion are we fully offering the OCA designee so that you don't get second guessed like this and what is you know, out of bounds and needs to be agreed upon by OCA as part of our process. So I'm also gonna take partial responsibility for this because I was contacted by the town manager who said that he had spoken to Darcy and that Darcy would rather um, not have him at the interviews, uh, but was going to have uh, Sharon. And I had read that the way Darcy read it, and although I felt like it deviated from what we had talked about, I will take the response of saying that I did say that it was okay without talking to the rest of the committee. So that is partially on me. So that's probably something that we should discuss more and say, you know, Going into the interviews, we, Oka should probably know exactly. I mean, you know, should the interview designee then, before they start interviews, make it very clear to the rest of Oka? You know, um, I think there's some things we need to nail down because I was surprised by the 25 minutes because um, I felt that we had agreed to, you know, 15. Um, so. It's 20. I'm pretty sure we agreed to 20. Okay. So. Uh, they ended up being like 15. But you're right, they may have been scheduled for 20. Yeah, mine were 15. So, but I will take responsibility. I did not know about the interview time, but I did, I was contacted by Paul. So I will say that if this is, I will, I will take responsibility for saying yes without talking to the rest of the committee because it was bef it was an in-between time of when we were meeting and so we might want to say today that before interviews start that there are certain things that the rest of the committee needs to know before the designee goes into interviews. We, do we want to say that? Let's have some discussion on that. Say that again? Certain things. So like time. Well, now we're finding out time, you know, because we felt that the, the amount of time was sort of stationary that we had agreed on that um, I guess I and I didn't I read the 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 um, I read the, the same way that you did saying that it would be up to the interview designees discretion which I don't think anybody's arguing with but I think that people are now saying they would be much more comfortable knowing who was going to be in the room before the interviews start correct Evan Right, so there's a balance here between literal text and expectations, right? And so um, to some extent, our process gave the interview designee a level of discretion, right? And yet, uh, this was the fifth committee that we were doing this, pro fifth and final for the time being, committee that we were doing this process for. Um, and so given that everyone else had the town manager present, or at least requested his presence, and given that we had all done 15 minute interviews, I think there was an expectation yeah. that that would be carried across. Um, and so if the question is, did the designee make an error given our process, I think the literal answer is no, right? But it, but it comes as a surprise to the rest of the committee because one of the things that we talked about was that given this very, and, and to some extent, I don't wanna beat a dead horse because I think after we put these finance, our, our process is literally a dead horse, right? Um, but at the same time, one of the things that we really stressed and that we were, we were challenged on a little bit at the last council meeting was, uh, so the standard interview questions, right? We were asked why, why were the interview designees for PVC and RCV not allowed to deviate from standard interview questions? And the response was, look, we instilled a great deal of power in this one interview designee. And to compensate for that, 
we tried to put a lot of controls on what they could and could not do so that even though they were the one person who was sort of making the recommendation, the rest of the committee felt comfortable that they were only going to act within certain parameters established by the committee and not deviate from them and not essentially try to grab some, po some additional power, right? And so I think the discomfort here comes from the fact that uh, the three people who have done them to date did them fairly similarly and then for this committee, um, there, were, there were decisions that were made that while within their power, went beyond the reasonable expectations of the committee and were done without first consulting the committee. Um, and so I think that's where we're getting hung up is there was an ability to do so, but an expectation that, it w that such, such decisions wouldn't be done without first consulting their colleagues, right? Uh, I'd just like to say that the, the at the discretion of the designee came from, if you recall, the discussion we had about open meeting law, that we couldn't make, um, we couldn't make the, the list of people that were present at the, at the interviews firm and official. They had to be looser, and so that we put in that language at the discretion of the designee. So um, I, either it's firm or it's not. I think that it's, it's not, but I think what's being said, and, and I should have paid closer attention at that time, is that um, while, you know, things could be uh, sort of mixed up a little bit or, or changed somewhat, when the designee goes into the interviews, you're really trying to take as much as you can, everybody else from OCA, in with you, which is why I think people are saying it would have been helpful to the rest of us to know, and I did know for one thing, um, going into it, who was going to be there. Even if you had changed it up, I think, you know, I don't know that you would have gotten like a, I mean, a fight from anybody else, but I think before going into interviews, it, it would have been helpful, I guess, for everyone to know that. And also, because we all had done 15 minute interviews to, discuss whether or not everyone felt comfortable with going um, that much longer. Again, I don't know that you would have necessarily run up against opposition, but I think it would have been good to be able to have something that was discussed simply because we did have rules so that we all felt like, well, we knew what was going to go on in, in the interviews. You, do you know what I mean? And I, I I think that the, it surprised me when I found out that the town manager's interviews were 15 minutes because we had decided 20 minutes and 15 minutes is really short but I can understand why the town manager, if the town manager is present at every single one of these interviews, why they would be every 15 minutes because he doesn't have much time. Um, and so since he wasn't involved, that gave these interviews a little bit more flexibility. But I understand that if you want to set a precedent and you don't, you, you don't want people comparing, well, this person gave me 25 minutes and this other person only gave me 15 minutes, then that's a problem. Uh, so we could compromise and just make it 20, and, which is what we decided in the first place. Even though I don't think 20 minutes is long enough. So what I'll just say is that interview designee, I, I felt comfortable with the amount of time that I, that I had and I, I would argue the, the fact that um, they were that length simply because of the town manager's time. I think that's something that Oka had decided on and I felt that I had uh, definitely enough time to do adequate interviews. Evan? Oh, George, I'm sorry. Yeah, definitely. So I actually do think that there's two issues, right? Inclusion of the town manager and the length of the interview. So the inclusion of the town manager is written verbatim at the discretion of the OCA designee. So certainly there was no, nothing wrong done by not including him. I think again, it was my point earlier of there was an expectation, right? Um, and so, um, you know, it, I think per, it would just would have been nice to know ahead of time, here's who's gonna be there and I decided not to instead of knowing after the fact. Uh, the, actually, I would argue that the interview scheduling, we did vote, Darcy's right, we voted to adopt a limit to 20 minutes. And so that one actually struck me as a little more interesting because the committee had voted a top limit of 20 minutes um, 
for interviews. And so there was a decision made to increase that, but without ever consulting the committee. It's a minor thing, right? I mean, it's, it does, at, at, on some level, it feels sort of like who cares. On the other level, it's the committee voted a protocol. The protocol said limit 20 minutes, and then the designee went outside of that protocol without running it by the committee or notifying the committee until after the interviews had been conducted. For something minor like that, it feels sort of like, eh, right? But, but there is some concern of when we set a protocol, there is an expectation that protocol would be followed, right? So uh, the protocol isn't being followed if we're doing 15 minutes. Why is that any different? Well, it's a limit to 20 minutes, so that an upper well, I limit. I don't think that's what we said. I think we said I we have, have the 20 minutes. It says what? It says limit interviews to 20 minutes, schedule three per hour. Okay, so um, I'm assuming that means that we want them to be 20 minute interviews. Um, this was my reaction to not wanting to have 15 minute interviews. Yes. Further discussion? I think we're we are all learning um, by doing, and uh, I I don't uh, I understand Darcy's frustration. Um, I also understand Evan's desire that we follow the protocols once we've established them. Um, what makes us even more uh, I don't know what adjective to use um, irritating whatever is that we probably won't follow this procedure ever again. So um, I think we should just acknowledge that um, uh, we're all struggling to do what we think is best. And um, protocols do matter. And, and I say this for myself as much as for anyone else, that um, when we do establish them, we should try to um, follow them. We should follow them, not just try. And uh, if we're going to deviate, we should uh, somehow find a way to uh, clear that with the committee beforehand. Um, but I think this is going forward. Um, I think the decision by Darcy to substitute Sonia for Paul makes sense to me, uh, given the nature of this particular committee. Um, going over five minutes, I can also have some sympathy with, given um, doing something like this for the first time and given the, the nature of this particular committee. So um, I hear what Evan is saying, and I respect it. Uh, and I think going forward, we will all take these protocols very seriously, but um, I guess I'm not as upset about or concerned about what happened because this is a one-time deal. And uh, uh, I think the decisions that Darcy made, I can understand why she made them. Um, she's also under time pressure to get this done. Um, so it would have been difficult to, uh, I don't know how she would have done it actually, other than simply canceling everything and waiting until the next meeting to discuss uh, the changes that she wanted to make. Maybe that's what we'll have to do in the future, but anyway. Alyssa? And we can, we could argue about that if we wanted to, but we don't need to, so. <laughs> is that, but every one of these things is, is a learning experience, right? So we're realizing, as you said, as we write the new protocols, we'll realize, oh, remember how we had this confusion point around interview time? Do we want to address that or not? Do we want to give an upper limit? Do we want to give a minimum? Right. And, and that will be part of that new process because the new process will probably include some kind of interview by somebody, right? And yep. so that, that will all be informative to that. So we won't forget any of these wonderful conversations. One of the things that I think has not been in our protocol, and Evan will correct me if I'm wrong on this one, is that I think we have not formally, although we have been following a pattern mm -hmm. based on um, what each of you has already done prior to this, there's been kind of a standard, without it being in our actual voted process, there's been a standard practice associated with the kind of email that the person gets, not at the beginning of the process, which we have that wonderful handout for and everything, but at the end of the process where it's, yes, you've been selected, but you know it still has to go through a couple of hoops, versus no, you haven't been selected at this time, but bear in mind things might change in the future and we welcome your appointment to something else. I don't think we, we wrote that into our process. Um, I think that our practice, again, practice and process, I think our practice has been to tell all those people the answer to whether or not they're being appointed prior to the information being made public. 
I was advised by one applicant that that didn't happen in this case, that they didn't find out until 21 hours after it had been posted that the email was dated the next day. I think that's true. I think I sent them out. That, yeah, that was, uh, uh, yeah. I think I sent them out the next day. Um, so, yes. My mistake, again. <laughs> well, it's taught us that we need to write that down somewhere so that it's clear to everybody what happened. Plus, we don't, don't, I don't think we have a standard letter of, um, to tell people that they were not chosen. So I had to make that up. Well, we used, you all used one at some point, right? So, all of you. Right. Oh, oh, that's so funny. Yeah. So I, I definitely did. I didn't take that. Um, and I don't know if I had included both in my report, but I, I did have one, and, and I definitely, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want to read somewhere. So I think that's definitely something we need to write down. Um, is a definite um, uh, script for a, a yes and yes, you're accepted. No, you're not. Um, email as well. I also called people on the phone, so maybe then a written script for a phone call. I did both because I feel like one of the big things that people are saying is that they, in the past, they just haven't heard anything. They don't know whether, you know, somebody got it. They, they don't know who got appointed. They don't know if they did or didn't get appointed, or didn't get appointed, obviously, but I mean, it's, it's just common courtesy to let people know, even if they weren't appointed, you know, that they weren't, but thank you so much, and, and please, you know, keep applying, like, you know, there's a lot of different reasons why, you know, you wouldn't be appointed to this, but you're very valuable. So I think then we've learned that the, both of those scripts need to be uh, written down and agreed on by OCA, and then the timeline needs to be established. Alyssa. And so now that we are at the two minutes to 12 mark, which is well past where we intended to be, now I need to throw a wrench into the works. Okay. So this has nothing to do with Darcy's report, which is going to be lovely when she does the cover on top of it, and it's all going to make sense to everybody, and it's going to be great. Um, and it doesn't have to be done until that, you know, that time that she's able to get it attached to the July 1. So you can even go on vacation at some point, <laughs> Darcy. I'll give you some time to do that. Except here's our problem. Yep. So, as you know, as I have complained about every chance I get, including right now, mm -hmm. town staff took it upon themselves to change the CAF to include multiple choices of committees on each CAF. So there is no longer, if you want to apply for finance committee and design review board and council on aging, you have to fill out three separate applications. Woohoo! we saved people 10 minutes. We just made our lives a lot more complicated in terms of tracking because now every one of these CAFs, as it turns out, is not automatically imported into a database. There's a whole lot of transfer of information that's happening from one set of data to another set of data. We were told in the report that everyone, well actually the words say, offered every resident applicant an interview, which I don't know if that means that there were non-residents who applied who didn't get offered an interview or if it really just meant everybody who filed a CAF. It had been my understanding that everyone who filed a CAF, which the town council has been provided all the copies of, the entire town council, as well as the original interview schedule, which like you said, didn't get updated. It was at a moment in time. And it came to my attention looking through some past materials that there was someone who'd applied for multiple committees, including finance committee that we didn't get the CAF for and is not listed on the interview schedule. So, and, and not listed as having even been offered. Right, so they're not on that, because that interview schedule that we see includes things like I called them three times, they changed their phone, I can't, their email doesn't work, and you know, and then, or it includes somebody being called, said, ooh, I got appointed to something else, I don't wanna do that anymore. Or I'm about to move to North Dakota, I don't wanna do that anymore. I mean, that interview list says all those things. That interview list did not include this individual's name and did not include that individual, and the CAF file that we were given as town councilors did not include. So it matched, you know, there wasn't a discrepancy. There was no CAF in the file and the person wasn't listed. It was an error. So where does that leave us? The, the person applied. Yep. 
and, and specifically applied for this position? Correct. Yes, on their CAF. And we didn't get that CAF, and they're not listed on the interview list. And has the town manager's office acknowledged that they, they got one? They got the CAF? So? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, new problem. Or for all we know, it's been a problem all along, and we just haven't caught it before. But it's, it's how big of a problem is this for us, is the question. Because on the one hand, this is a lot like our conversation at town council, right? Is, are these good applicants? Yes, these are good applicants. These are good applicants. We're very happy with these applicants. Mm -hmm. Were, was the process followed to the extent that we've written it down? I mean, aside from discretionary things, right, which we may write down in the future, we said, we get all CAFs. We don't care if somebody moved to Florida. We still get the CAF, and then it says on the list, they moved to Florida. Um, and that didn't happen in this case. That's why I was upstairs asking Angela about this. So I don't know how we feel about that at this point. Like I said, given that we have good applicants for the slots, what do we do? So this brings up a number of questions that are bigger than this finance committee, right? So the first question is, when we are provided CAFs and told this is the applicant pool, the question is, is it actually, mm -hmm. right? Because we know of at least one individual who applied to finance committee whose CAF does not appear in this applicant pool and, is, and was not offered an interview. What that means is that, I, and I don't know why staff decided not to offer that person an interview, can I make a clarification statement about what I said? And I realize you might want to say a different thing for a different reason. But what I actually thought I said was we got an interview list that did not include that person on it. I didn't say why or why not that might be. And so I think this has gone an additional step when you mention that particular thing. And I think there is a point of disagreement associated with that, which I was not bringing up yet at this point. So this is, this is all new, and this is very confusing. But the interview, what my initial concern was, was that the CAF and the person was not listed. There's an additional point of confusion as to whether or not, because the person should show up on there, whether they move to Florida or are disinterested or yeah. not. So that, we missed the boat on that one. So we don't have a complete pool, absolutely. Then the second issue is if that person was indeed offered an interview and there is a difference of opinion I just confirmed with Angela on that question. So we have a technical glitch and a difference of opinion. So the point I was going to say is that we just, we literally don't know, yeah. right? So I'm, I wasn't, I know where you think I was going and I wasn't going Sorry. there. <laughs> um, I stopped short. All, all I was saying is we, one, don't have the CAF and two, don't know if that person is offered an interview. So the question before us then is, this one isolated case for one individual for this one committee, or does this sort of trickle through? Because the problem here, and the problem that I have, is that with regard to finance, Z uh, ZBA, planning board, RCV, and PVC, these are town council appointments, and yet there are decisions that are being made for us by staff as to who the applicant pool is and who is being offered an interview. And I, I have an issue with that. And it didn't become clear that that was an issue until I realized that there was a name missing from this list. Hmm. Well, that's a big one because um, then yeah. that makes me feel like then we have to have some kind of a safeguard on what we get because that's on us. That's on us if someone says that, right? Because then what people are saying is, can absolutely be true. I don't even know if you got it. I don't know why, you know, so. And this, this individual is going to potentially watch finance committee members be appointed and say, wait, what? So I, I don't know how to address this right now, but I would say absolutely it has to be addressed that town council knows without any bit of doubt 
that we have all, I mean, that goes without saying, that we have every single CAF that was there. So I don't know how we find that out, but um, I, yes. And then I realize that we're in a time crunch for this, but then part of me ethically really feels uncomfortable with going ahead and appointing people without having someone very, if, if, wow, like you would have to have an interview with that person and, and have it be thoughtful and not a foregone conclusion that the people that you already brought forward were there. We've already offered them, what? we've already made an off offers that Ten, they've accepted. But you have said that the, it could change and this is a big deal to yeah. have somebody, yeah. George. And I, I want to let George speak because anyway, so I just wanted to clarify because it, it's not even that we need to have interview, right? But we at least need to know that people, I, I like caught this, right? It was like a catch because I was doing something else, right? And, and that shouldn't be how we discover the full applicant pool. And we need to know that ev when we say, as I said in the report, that every resident applicant is offered an interview, that line is factually inaccurate to no fault of Darcy's, right? right. It, but it's inaccurate. And so when we're saying that, we have to know that it's true. So I don't necessarily know what this means for this. But, and, and I don't know, maybe that person would withdraw the moment they were offered an interview, but if we're saying we're offering interviews to everyone who applies, we need to actually do so. And I'm sorry, George. I... This is a, a real issue, it seems to me. Um, and I don't see how we can go forward, no matter what we may or may not have done at this point, um, if we find out that the very basic elements of the process, have, for reasons we don't quite understand yet, uh, seem to have uh, not been followed. Um, I don't see how we can vote on this or move it, move it forward until we get some answers to these questions. And what answers did you get, Alyssa? Angela said she would be willing to come and talk to us if we wanted her to, and I just saw her walk by, so. So did you say you had a hard stop at noon, I thought? I, I do, I, I have to be somewhere at 12.30. Should we table this discussion until our next meeting? I would say yes. And see if Angela yes. is willing to come yes. talk to us? At our next meeting, yes, which means we'll be meeting next Monday. About, and, and, should we, and you can talk to her about just, I mean, I did talk to her. I do feel very yeah. confident about what she explained to me, but um, so that we can all, she did offer to come and explain it to us. I just said I didn't know how long we'd be. All right, so I'll ask that. her if she would could please come to our next meeting. So, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with trying to figure out what the alternatives would be if, if uh, we have this straggling applicant. Um, I could conceivably, uh, she could have an interview. Um, I don't know what the process would be after that if, uh, well, I don't know. I guess I could I just come report to the committee, and um, I just don't know exactly how it would work with having already offered to three people. I, One thing I would like to say is that I wish the Finance Committee hadn't changed from four to three resident non-voting members, because throughout the whole process, I kept on thinking, geez, I wish that there were four instead of three. Alyssa? So I just say quickly, I, I mean, I, I hear exactly what we're saying and we wanna make sure that we are being sensitive to all of this. I think this is, a, it's an error and it's an error between transposing information from one not very user-friendly system to another user-friendly system. It's not a surprise, it's a problem but it's not a surprise. It's not like somebody didn't do their job. It's just complicated to move data from one place to another. Mm -hmm. And do we know if this is the only one? Well, I guess right. we don't know that. But given that these people have been offered appointments, given that we believe, it isn't like we were like, well, I guess we'll give you the appointment. You know, right? right? These yeah, were people that we were positively, and I get that we can't compare, but we can't. We can't unwind this clock. We can't go back and add that person or persons, if we find more, to the mix and say that. I mean, it's literally things, bad things happen sometimes. And so I can't see that there's any additional information. I mean, if Bill Gates applied to our finance committee, no matter how we might feel about Bill Gates, I mean, would we, would we say, oh, well, all bets are off. We're going to fire one of the three people we just agreed to appoint. I mean, like, we can't do that. And so, I mean, 
Well, we could, arguably, but what's right? So arguably, it's is there one or more other people out there, let's hope it's just one, that would still be interested, because we don't, we're not, that's not entirely clear as a fact yet at this point. And if that's true, how does that change all of this? Because I, I guess what I'm just saying is for Monday, right, we're in a hurry now, we gotta get out of here. Monday, we're gonna have another meeting, we'll have Angela so that we can understand what happened, but what does that matter? at this point, the reality is, are we going to proceed with these folks or are we going to say, we need to go ahead and inter you know, do a double check of the records, like ask somebody to scan them again to make sure there's only one and then to schedule additional interviews or not. I mean, I feel like we can make that decision without knowing which access or Excel spreadsheet is messed up. I mean, like that's not really our problem. Our problem is not having all the information and obviously now that it's been brought to their attention, they're obviously gonna deal with it, but what are we gonna do with what we can do? And I think we can decide that now. If you, if you wanna take a vote on it, we can. I will just say that I think that is, I, I'm, I mean, you could say that it was a, a simple mistake, but I think for me it speaks to a, a confirmation of a lot of people saying that they never heard or they never got an interview or they for years never knew what happened to the CAF. So, I mean, if you're saying that you would like to make a motion, then I would say, then feel free to make a motion. Evan? Uh, so I, I, I hear what Alyssa's saying. And um, so I think the conversation we need to have with Angela um, really speaks to what we do going forward and, and might not be able to influence this. Because I'm also worried, I'm sitting here now saying, were there people who applied for RCV who, who I never saw, right? But if we found out, yes, there were, we're not gonna go back and say, sorry, appointed RCV, we're going to rescind your appointment and start over, right? And that's sort of, it's just we caught this before this had gone through, right? But if this had gone through, then we wouldn't go back on it, right? So, so then what does that mean going forward? Right, we have So if this, if this keeps happening <laughs> going forward, audit. then we just go, oh, well, again, a mistake. So I think That's it speaks to really needing to revise our relationship with staff on these. And I think we've seen that. In, and I think it, we need to have a, a broader discussion about, I keep saying this today, we need to have broader discussion, but we do, about our relationship with staff with this, how decisions are made, when they're made, because this is related to a whole bunch of other questions we have about when do we set up interviews? When do we determine that a pool is sufficient, right? And it also relates back to the CAS. I mean, Alyssa pointed out, there is a real problem with people being able to apply to multiple bodies on one CAF. It's convenient for the public, but it blurs lines of authority when it comes to the CAF. So, and that's a conversation I think we should be prepared to have with Angela. All of that said, uh, regarding, I have additional questions about the Finance Committee appointments, and given your time frame, I would prefer that we wait until next week to finish this discussion. I'm not ready to take a vote. So, even before I brought that up, you weren't willing to take Correct. a vote? Okay. I can't take a vote at this point until at least I get some answer on some understanding of what has gone wrong, since whether we do now know that something's gone wrong, and the process is still in the works, and we could, if we decide, um, stop it and do something all over again if we so decide. But let's get at least an answer to the immediate question of what went wrong. Which, like I said, Angela was more than happy to yeah. provide to us, but I didn't want to feel like I was like throwing her to the yeah, wolves yeah. here right away. Yeah, and true. so once we figured out what we were gonna do next, and so you'll have a conversation with her, I think in the meantime, we need, since no one's watching this video, um, but it is potentially being reported by the press, we need to contact these people immediately Absolutely. and tell them we're really sorry that you happen to be the three people <laughs> whose names were brought up when we found this error in our system. And like you said, we, I mean, I can't, you might decide, and it sounds like people had some questions, they weren't ready to vote, which surprised me because I thought we were already talking about Darcy writing the report of Oka's, but I didn't see that we hadn't in voted theory. yet. In theory. And so we had other questions about finance committee appointments it sounds like beyond just the content of the interviews etc and so this is a more about the actual people yeah. oh right we so we haven't had that, that conversation <laughs> and so 
to let them know that we're just still working on it. I mean, we probably don't need to get into all the grisly details. We can just tell them, just as you said probably at the end of your email, you know, it still has to go through some more steps before it's a done deal to let them know that it's not going to be addressed until the July 1st town council meeting and that Oak will be talking about it next week if they want to come or send somebody to come and watch us. Do we think that's necessary to... Yes, I, I'm not ready to read about it in the press yeah. that, that, that we just had this conversation. Yeah. I mean, it's potential they're going to read it in the press and that would be unfortunate for them. And, and also just your email said to them on Monday, June 17th, they'll be considered and potentially vote, and it might be. I know that when I had RCV, I, even though we voted, I didn't immediately email the people and say, just to let you know, you got through this step, and then within the week, they all emailed me and said, what's going on? You said OCA was gonna vote on this. And so just, I think, as a courtesy to say, hey, I know it said potentially vote on June 17th. That vote is now probably June 24th. Otherwise, they're just wondering what's happening. So um, that being said, and the fact that I had a firm stop almost 20 minutes yes. ago, um, I'm going to make the motion that we adjourn. I second. Oh, oh I'm so, Art, I'm so sorry. Public comment? <laughs> we can hold it till next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Let's thank you so much, show. Evan. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Evan. Okay, so that being done, my head being scrambled, but um, I would make the motion to adjourn at, yeah. Is there a second? George seconds. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We adjourn at 12.16.